Good afternoon. This is the on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report. I'm Shannon McGovern, and I'm here with the recently re-elected Senator Cree Deeds. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Um, so you successfully secured the votes to keep you in office last week. Um, did you meet your goal as far as the percentage of votes you wanted to win by? I just wanted 50% plus one, and I, I achieved my, my goal. The goal was to, just to be re-elected and to get in touch with as many of the new voters as possible. And I tried to do that. So yes, we were successful last week, and I'm pleased. Well, congratulations with Thanks. that. Um, so what's next on your senatorial agenda? Well, the Senate's going to have to be reorganized. We've lost, we lost two Democratic members, so we've got 2020, and there's going to be a lot of, a lot of um, folks make that are boastful between now and January, but we're going to have to do the hard work of reorganizing the Senate. We're going to do that. Um, later this week, we're going to meet, the Senate Finance Committee will meet to kind of go over the fiscal picture for the Commonwealth. One of our biggest jobs is to balance the budget every year, and so that, that'll have to, have to happen in January and February. Um, and I'll be working as hard as I can, you know, in this, and the Virginia legislators are part-time, so I'll be working to get my law practice as wrapped up as I can by the end of the year so I can, I can go spend January and February and part of March in Richmond. Have those budget um, discussions started yet? I know you met with... Rockbridge County officials last week too. Right. Well, well, you know, localities will, will present their views and different groups will present their views. The, 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 what we will do this week is probably look at the real revenue pictures for the Commonwealth and look at the, the needs pictures, the, the wants and the needs and the, the revenue. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at those three things this week. The governor, the middle of next month, December, will present his idea of the budget. Um, the governor proposes, the General Assembly disposes. On the 11th of January, we'll, we'll go into session for a 60-day session, and during that period of time, we will be responsible for balancing the two-year budget. Um, so in the meeting last week, what were some of the concerns raised by the county officials? Well, it's mostly fiscal. Um, you know, the reality is we've been in a worldwide recession, and Virginia, more than most states, depends on federal spending. We've balanced our budget the last three years by doing, by doing a couple of things primarily the last two years. Number one, we borrowed $620, $640 million from the retirement system. We can't go on doing that forever. Our retirement system right now has a huge unfunded liability. Um, over the next 35 years, I think it's $17.5 billion, and we're going to have to address that. We can't borrow more money from that funding stream. Number two, we've, we've taken hundreds of millions of dollars in federal stimulus funds. Now, those funds are not going to be available anymore. They're going to run out. And when they run out, that means that we have to replace them somehow. And unfortunately, the, the budget revenues have been, have been growing at a steady pace this year. Our economy is in better shape than that and, and lot, it exists in lots of states. But we are, we're not going to have a lot of extra dough um, come in January or February. The third thing we've used to balance the budget, and this is what localities primarily are concerned about, is by cutting aid to localities. One of the largest portions of the budget is state budget is, count, is assistance to localities, whether it's, it's car tax reimbursement, whether it's um, um, paying for constitutional officers, whether it's paying for schools. Um, over the course of the last few years, we've reduced that significantly, and we've also passed on responsibilities. Um, what a lot of people at local government like to call unfunded mandates. And that has added up to se also several hundred million dollars over the last few years. That, that eats particularly at localities like Rockbridge. When Rockbridge is, is, has been told they've been under the hammer the last 10 or 12 years to close their landfill by the end of next year, um, they think that's, uh, that, that's a major source of conflict between all the local governments. They say it's going to cost them a million, million and a half dollars because they've got another two years worth of capacity within the landfill. Buena Vista and Lexington, on the other hand, are spending right money right now to develop a recycling facility to take on some of the anticipated um, material, they're, the waste they're going to get from Rockbridge County. So it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. You know, you fix a problem for Rockbridge County, you create one for Buena Vista and Lexington. It's, a, it's an area of conflict, but local governments are concerned. It's, it's primarily it comes down to fiscal policy. Going back to that landfill issue, is there any potential for that mandate to be lifted? Well, here's the thing. Back in the late 90s, we were looking at, at, at waste material coming into Virginia. And we, we looked at, at, at it from every aspect, and we tried to look at what they, you know, certain landfills that 
we're, we're required to have um, be capped, but required to have a, a boundary between the ground and the waste so you could protect groundwater. Certain landfills that weren't quite up to par were given um, a certain number of years, Gen December 31, 2012, to be, um, to be closed, and Rock Bridge was one of those. Rock Bridge, there's no evidence that Rock Bridge is leaking. There's no evidence that, that anything's going on there that's wrong, but it just fit into the category because it didn't have the, the material between it, the, the garbage and the ground. Um, it fit into the category that there are a lot of other landfills um, fit into. Now, now here's the issue. We go, to, we go to Richmond and we succeed in fixing Rock Bridge County's um, landfill problem and giving them an extra two years. Who else? is going to want the same treatment. The problem you have is the precedent you set with everything, with the, with the bills. So you have, to, you have to be as fair and balanced as you can. As a senator, I represent 200,000 people, and I have to do what I can to represent those people. But I also have an obligation to the over 8 million Virginians, the people that I don't represent as well, because the things that I do for the people I rep represent are, are going to have some precedential value for something another legislator might want to do. Um, so, going in a slightly different direction now, um, so the Senate post-election is now split evenly. 2020. Exactly. Um, so, do you, there's a potential for gridlock on a lot of issues. How do you plan to get stuff done? Well, th th that's very interesting. I, 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 on my way over here today, I ran into a Republican colleague of mine who's scratching his head about it too. And he, he, he was a member of the Senate in 96 when... Um, it was 2020, and the president was there for power sharing. You know, th there's been a lot of bluff and a lot of um, noise from the Republican side that, that now they, they have the majority since they have 20 plus the lieutenant governor. But the Constitution of Virginia governs, and the Constitution says that you have to have 21 members of the Senate to organize. You have to have a quorum. Well, they don't have a quorum with 20 plus the lieutenant governor. Um, they can't pass a budget with 20 plus the lieutenant governor. They can't elect judges with 20 plus the lieutenant governor. There's going to have to be some accommodation and there has to be some mature discussion between the sides and I'm very hopeful that that discussion will begin this week. So what's going to go into that discussion? Well, we're, we're going to have, you know, my, my sense is that we, we need to pay attention to the power sharing agreement that occurred in 1996. We need to um, have some, but because the bottom line is we've got an obligation to work for all of the people of Virginia in the next few years. We have to work together. We have to put aside Democrats and Republicans and be adults, be Virginians. And so that, that's going to require some ser very serious discussion by us and, and putting away our partisan hats for a while. You know, I fear that the, the Republicans maybe, they, they thought they were going to come out of this with 22 or 23 seats. So while we lost seats, we didn't do as, we didn't do, the Republicans didn't gain everything that they, they thought they were going to gain. We, we just need to have some serious discussions down and hopefully we can do that. Do you foresee this in any way delaying issues such as the budget discussion? I, I, what, what happened in 1996, um, what, the, what it delayed was, as, as I recall, the Senate, um, I was in the House of Delegates in those years. And as I recall, the Senate did not go into session for a long time on the first day because they were negotiating um, between the Democratic caucus and the Republican caucus. There was a Democratic attorney general at that time, and there's an attorney general's opinion that says the, the, the lieutenant governor cannot be the 21st member, does not have a vote. And the Constitution, the only thing that it speaks to is the attorney general or the lieutenant governor's power to break ties. So it's clear they can't organize. There has to be some discussion, and, and that discussion ought to be now rather than wait, whether, rather than wait until January. But it's possible that, that it could wait until January. As I recall, in 1996, because the Senate could not be organized, because the Senate would not organize itself, there was no um, adoption of joint rules with the House and the Senate. And the governor in 1996, maybe the, the, the first time in modern history, gave his State of the Commonwealth address not from the Chamber of the House of Delegates, but from his office um, for te of televised audience because the, the, the parties could not agree. Well, I want to avoid that, and I, I hope we can, we can begin discussions this week. Um, so, again, this is slightly off topic, but um, considering how popular you have shown yourself in this past election, um, have you considered running against uh, Congressman Bob Goodleg? You know, not not really. No, I I, I enjoy what I what I do, and um, 
I, I don't know that a sign of getting elected, getting 64% is necessarily a sign of popularity. It's a sign that I work, worked hard and got in touch with a lot of people and um, I, I've been successful as a senator. You know, I, I enjoy what I'm doing in Richmond and Washington is that the problems just seem to be so big and people don't really accomplish much. Democrats and Republicans, it seems to me, they just spend too much time engaged in partisan warfare and, and doing the work of getting reelected and they don't actually get anything done. In, Rich, in Richmond, you know, where we have limits on the amount of time we spend in session and we, we're required to balance the budget, I, I've, I have a real sense of accomplishment after almost every session, even in some little way. I can get some things done for some of the people that I represent or some of the people of the Commonwealth. And that's, that, that's quite rewarding. I, I, I'm not certain that I want to do the things necessary to go to, to Washington and I, I just don't know that I would enjoy that culture. Um, did uh, your past um, loss, losses in elections last year and also in 2005, did that influence the way, your strategy for this year? For this campaign? <laughs> well, everything you go through, you know, you learn from everything you go through, I hope. So I'm, I'm certain that it did. It, it, it influences me every day. But, it, it, you know, the, in life, you're going to have disappointments. Every, everything's not going to go your way unless you're, you're touched, you've got a golden touch. And you just have to learn to deal with those disappointments and move on. And, and I've, that's what I've tried to do. Well, great. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'm Shannon McGovern. Thanks for watching The Rockbridge Report.